What's up, y'all? Welcome to Red Card Lucha. Today's episode is all about rankings. I wanted to rank my masks from 15 all the way down to number one. Now, it's not just about the looks. It's about the story, what the mask means to me, how I obtained it. Everything takes into account, plus looks, and we narrowed it down from 15 all the way to one. So let's jump right into it. Let's get to number 15. So at number 15, we have the iconic La Parca. Now, the reason it is number 15, while La Parca is an icon, especially here in the U.S. as well, with his stint in WCW, the mask doesn't really mean much. I bought it at the uh, AAA website, um, had it delivered. Um, nothing special. Just bought it online. Anybody could do it. There's no story behind it. It wasn't used. It's just a regular bot mask online. So if I had to get rid of one, definitely be this one um again la parka legendary dude loved his uh jive gimmick on wcw really funny but uh yeah doesn't really mean anything to me so la parka number 15 all right number 14 now if you ask any mask collector any luchador fan um this guy's a big deal means a lot to the community but like La Parca, the mask itself doesn't really mean anything to me. And the only reason it's above La Parca is because when I called um, to have some stuff arranged, um, I actually got to talk to the junior version of this mask, um, and that is Blue Demon. So, Blue Demon, the mask itself is iconic. I love it. It's plain, it's simple. Plain and simple, lasts forever. Dole never goes out of style. So the mask is iconic, will never go out of style. I love it. But like La Parca, I really didn't do anything aside from just place an order online at the official Blue Demon store and got the mask. Like I mentioned in this video, I had a friend in Mexico City call the, uh, call the store to have some stuff uh, arranged for the uh, delivery. And actually, Blue Demon Jr. answered the phone and spoke uh, with my friends. So there is some kind of connection there. Uh, but aside from that, it doesn't really mean much to me. Number 14, Blue Demon. Next on the list, number 13, we have Fuego. Now, Fuego um, started wrestling again last year in 2022. Um, now I love his aesthetic reminds me a lot of the wrestling that I grew up with um, I see a little bit of Macho Man and Ultimate Warrior uh, when he comes out he comes out with his jacket with the with the I don't know what's the like flares you know hanging down and all that fun stuff um, really big with the pinks the yellows uh, I love his style I love what he's all about um, the reason that the mask is all the way back at 13 just the story behind it um, now, I was in contact with Fuego, super cool dude. We messaged each other on Instagram, um, but unfortunately, I didn't get to meet him. Um, the whole process was done via Instagram, and he sent the mask to me um, through FedEx, um, but there was just no personal connection aside from the Instagram messaging. But I love his style. Um, I think he's going to have a big year come 2023. Um, he is a fan favorite. He does get the crowd going whenever he does come out. Um, so I think he's going to have a big year in the CMLL. Um, so looking forward to what he does. But number 13, Fuego. All right, now number 12 hurts me because I believe this guy does not belong at number 12 uh, for various reasons. But again, the story behind it and how it's obtained it isn't really special to me. It is Templario. Um, now, like Fuego, um, Templario is ring used. Um, so that's actually the theme you'll see is these are all ring used masks aside from the La Parca and the Blue Demon. That's why they don't mean too much to me. But from here on out, everything you see will be ring used. Now, I try to get the masks after I see the match myself personally. Um, but Templario, I wasn't in town when he used this mask. And much like Fuego, everything was done via Instagram. Uh, and he sent the mask to me via FedEx. It is signed to me. I don't have intentions on selling any of these masks. Um, I'm just growing the collection for the culture. Um, and I think it means a lot uh, for Mexicans and having that Mexican pride with Lucha Libre. So, I love, uh, I love having them signed to me personally because I don't plan on selling these at all. Uh, but back to the mask itself, 
ring used, um, sent it to me. Love uh, what Templario has done this last year. His matches with Soberano Jr. have been nothing less of iconic. Um, they just do so well together, their styles, and I love Templario as a luchador. Um, I hate having him at number 12. If there was a cooler store, if we got to meet, he'd be much higher on that list, um, but he falls in at number 12. So at number 11, we're not going too far from home. We're keeping it local. It is local luchador Cyrus. Now, this was a mask that he used in Japan. Um, I saw Cyrus at a wrestling, um, at a wrestling collector show in, in Texas. And I actually didn't have plans on obtaining this mask from him, but he had it. He had the mask that he used in Japan. Um, and again, he's a local dude. So one personal rule of mine, all the local guys, I try to support them and I try to buy directly from them. Bought this from him. Um, again, used in Japan, has the cool little frailings in the back. You'll see that with a lot of the local guys. Uh, it's cool. Typically doesn't have these, uh, these teeth on his mask. Always has this little um, symbol right here, but there you go. All right, so we've cracked into the top 10. Now, this one was tough, very tough. But what it settled me on, uh, on number 10 here, was the specific mask uh, that I got. Now, this Luchador was my favorite last year, one of my favorites last year. Gets a lot of TV time here in the United States, so that helps as well. And I just love the dude's style. The dude's a legit badass. Not like kayfabe badass, like a legit badass badass it's not the mask that i initially wanted um but it was used it was used at the event um we got to meet really quickly um so there wasn't like too much conversation there it was mask picture and off you go it is historical in mexico um i highly recommend you look up the history pentagon cero miedo pentagon junior pentagon cero m whatever you want to call them pentagon um now the reason that i'm not crazy about this mask and the reason it's at number 10 are the skulls here on the on the side i don't like the skulls um now we're just going aesthetic because all the masks from here on out are going to be ring use one but also uh, i met the luchadors after the event so now we're just going off aesthetic so number 10 had to be pentagon cero miedo if it wasn't for these damn skulls it'd be top three I love the dude, love what he's about. I love his masks. And again, they're iconic, but these skulls, you have no idea, they kill me. I feel very like, like very Halloween-ish, but he was a badass, took a picture, cool dude. If you want a Pentagon mask, be sure to hit up his WhatsApp that he, he promotes it on his Instagram. So add him on Instagram. When he promotes the mask, hit up the, the WhatsApp. The dudes are super cool. Um, they're very, uh, they're very good with the communication. They keep you up to date on what's happening, and then they set up a time and place to meet. We got it done. Pentagon Junior, Pentagon Cero Miedo, badass dude. Looking forward to what he's going to do in 2023. So number nine, we are again keeping it local. We have up and comer, rising star, expecting to do great things. Brillante, RB, Brillante RB, La Joya del Aire. If you take a look at my uh, history below, you see that I spent a day with him at a local Lucha event. Cool dude, very nice dude, very humble, and I really, really wish this dude nothing but success in the future. There's just certain people that you get a good aura and a good vibe around, and he's one of them. Uh, been able or been lucky enough to hang out with him a few occasions. I try to go to all the local shows he has here in Texas really good dude if you have a chance please go out and check out a brillante rb match follow him on insta check him out if he's in your local town really good dude he's here at number nine he's a local guy as i said i try to support all the local dudes um has little frailings in the back um and he i don't recall the event he wore it um, but we met at a starbucks afterwards got me the mask signed it um so it's to it's to me and i'm looking forward to seeing what he has planned in his future and again this is a mass that i'll cherish um as i get older it means a lot especially coming from a hometown kid so shouts out brianta rb and at number nine we have his mask so at number eight i got in my most recent trip to mexico city this one um i hounded the guy on instagram finally got in touch with them it was tough 
Um, this next mask, I expect good things out of this luchador. I think he's going to be a household name in Mexico um, in the near future if he isn't already there. Uh, but I love it because it reminds me of Blue Panther, and that is Pantarita del Ring Jr. I just feel like Blue Demon, Blue Panther, especially those older, older masks are very simple. Um, but again, simplicity lasts forever. So it's just a panther face with his three stripes, yellow and black, kind of like uh, the red card lucha mask. Again, just had a crazy year last year. I think he's going to have a even bigger year this year. I think he's going to be a legend when it's all said and done. Um, looking forward to what he does. Now to the story of this mask, hit him up on Instagram. We agreed to meet. Um, I still have the card uh, somewhere there in my desk. But uh, after the show, he hit me up. He's like, hey, meet me by the dressing room. Had to go near the dressing room. I couldn't get in, obviously. Um, security guards were giving me a hard time. And I was like, look, look, like I'm messaging him. We're going to meet right now. He had to come out. He comes out. They still gave him a hard time. So we had to meet like like in a corner of a parking garage where nobody could see us. Look kind of shady, but we got it done. Um, signed the mask for me. Took a picture with me. Cool dude. He's fun to watch. Super acrobatic. High flyer. Just everything you love about Lucha Libre, he's all about. It. Now, number seven, if you saw my latest video, you'll know who it is. It's the latest uh, mask in the Red Card Lucha collection. And that is Forastero from Nueva Generación Dinamita. Um, the reason I have it at seven, I just think it looks really cool. The material, it's like, um, like a suede. It's like a suede material. So suede material with the gold outline, the Forastero uh, emblem right there. Um, they were here in Texas, had a great show. It was their first visit in Texas, so that's pretty uh, monumental in itself. Um, he was cool. Now the story with him, they released the card for the event. I hit him up on Instagram. It took him a few weeks, and I kind of gave him hope. Didn't think it was going to happen. I was hoping I could try to convince him to, to sell, the, sell me this mask in person. But he finally hit me up and he was like, yeah, let's get it done, whatever, whatever. Cool thing was he let me choose the mask that he was going to wear for the event. So he sent me a, a bunch of pictures of masks and told them which one I liked, which was this bad boy. He wore it at the event, signed it to me. Um, I love the dynasties of Mexican Lucha Libre. His family's part of that um, dynasty list. So I'm glad to have another dynasty in the collection. So number six now uh this is another local guy but he's in the cmll um already having a great year him and his twin brother pretty sure i just gave it up with that little spoiler there but we have gemelo dos um from los gemelos diablos cool story hit him up on insta told him i was from the area that he's from but on the other side of the border here in the u.s he's from the mexican side so he agreed to meet me after his last event the arena mexico uh he has a little stand where they sell all their merch and i think they have some like tacos and and asadas and stuff like that so after the event met with pantarita del ring got his mask and they rushed over to his little stall with him and his brother and uh, got to meet them, talked a little bit, talked about our area of Texas and where we're from. So really glad I got this one because he's a local guy, as I said, and he's having a lot of success. And it's just a cool mask. Like, you know, they're heel characters or they're rudos and they just look like rudos. The black looks very demonic, um, very goth. Uh, with the with the webbed eyes and the little teeth outline. It's a cool mask. Um, so yeah, number six. All right, so now we're down to the top five. Five and four are both interchangeable. Um, I guess five, the reason this one is five is because we didn't meet initially right after the event. Uh, we met the next day. So five is Titan, uh, El Immortal. Um, now, Aesthetically, I just, I love this mask. It has the symbiote eating the skeleton face. Um, this one we messaged on Instagram. We met the next Saturday after uh, after the Viernes Espectacular in, in Arena Mexico. He was super patient with me, and I appreciate that. So, Titan, if you ever see this, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for waiting for me, and thank you so much for the mask. Uh, but yeah, I love Titan's style. Uh, his masks all... Really, really cool. Um, love his style of Lucha Libre as, as well. Got the mask, took a picture, signed a picture for me, made a video for a good friend of mine, a personal video. Um, and yeah, it was awesome. So number five, Titan. 
All right, now number four. Um, I was not expecting to get this mask. Lo and behold, a week after um, going at it with Chris Jericho at AEW, I got Bandido's mask. I think this is the exact uh, mask that he used against Chris Jericho. It's the exact same style, but I don't think it's the exact mask. He did use this mask, however. Um, so that's why it's at number four. Um, it was pretty iconic for the time um, that I obtained the mask. It was an exact week after the uh, the AEW against Chris Jericho. So he was having a great run. I think he's going to have a great run. If I'm keeping it completely honest with you, I'm, I'm a little bummed out with the way he's uh, gone into AEW these first couple matches. Hope he has a, a better stint here in the U.S. But number four, Bandido. Um, I just love that it's a completely different style. It's like a bandit's mask. Um, completely, just totally unconventional in Lucha Libre masks. Um, it is signed to me. Uh, means a lot to have him sign it. But uh, yeah, let's go on to the top three. All right, so at number three, we have the last local guy of the collection. Now this dude, I think, is going to have a great 2023. It's already started. He puts on crazy matches. Um, he's been doing a lot of stuff with Bandido and the big Lucha group. Commander. Got this at a local event. We talked for a little bit. Cool dude. Again, he's another local guy, so that's why it's so high up on my list. But what puts it at number three, aside from the other guys, is just the year he's had, or the year he had when I got the mask, the year he's having, and I think he's going to do great things. Um, like Cyrus, this is also the masks that he used in Japan. Um, what took this to number three out of the local guys was just the success one, but also I just, I love the mask. The red and white with the with the homage to uh, to Japan there with the rising sun flag um, has the frails in the back. Just a fun, fun luchador to watch. Highly recommend if you can watch any of his matches, whether it be YouTube or even better in person, check him out. Number three, Commander. All right, now at number two, we have another dynasty in uh, Mexican culture, Mexican history. That's why this one is so far up on my list. Um, one and two, I don't think will ever be replaced. My no, my one and two mask, no matter. I mean, it's an ever growing collection. I, I don't plan on stopping anytime soon, but I don't see any other masks uh, beating out one and two in their spots. It's El Hijo de Dr. Wagner, or excuse me, Hijo de Dr. Wagner Jr. So if you if you're familiar, if you're not familiar, excuse me, you have Dr. Wagner, which was his grandfather. You have Dr. Wagner Jr., which is his father, and you have El Hijo de Wagner Jr., which is this guy. He also has a brother who's currently in Japan, Galeno del Mal, um, which is uh, doc like the like the evil doctor, I guess, um, if you want to roughly translate it. But um, one of my favorite rudos. I saw him here locally. He had a match against Psycho Clown. He had just gotten back from Japan, and um, there was a quick meet and greet uh, before the the event. So I met with him, and I was like, "Hey, like you know, I'd love to buy a mask from you." Blah blah blah. And so he had a few there, and I chose this one. And before you know, giving it to me, he was like, "You want me to wear it tonight?" And I was like, "Well, of course." So he wore it at the event, gave it to me right after the fight against Psycho Clown. Um, Funny thing about this though, it legit stank. It stank for like two days. It stank in my car, bringing it from the event to my house. So my car stunk like his sweat, like his BO. And then my house stunk like his BO. So I had to leave it outside, washed it, left it outside for a day, let it dry up. Um, so yeah, got uh, got uh, Hijo de Wagner's man sweat all over, all over the house. Just means a lot to me in Mexican history, Mexican culture. Love what he does, recognizing the uh, the Aztec artwork. Um, always has the Mexican colors in one way or another. And again, the original Rudo, the best Rudo, in my opinion, that whole family, they got it down. This dude comes from a family of wrestlers. His mom is a wrestler, his dad's a wrestler. So comes from a pretty significant bloodline. He knows what he's doing. I think he's gonna have a really good year. He's killing in Japan right now. He's the current champion. Um, so check him out, Ijo de Wagner Jr. All right, y'all, now it's time for number one. Now, honestly, no one's ever taken the number one crown away from this mask. Um, it's going to sit at that number one throne uh, for as long as we know because this mask, this luchador got me into the collecting of these masks and, and 
getting these masks and got me into Lucha Libre. If it wasn't for this luchador, if it wasn't for this wrestler, none of this would be happening right now. But that is Soberano Jr. Now, quick story about this. I was visiting Mexico City. My buddy wanted to go to a Lucha Libre show. I went kicking and screaming, reluctantly did not want to go. Watching the mask, you know, there was some fun fights. It was a good time. Um, but the headliner was this dude, and he comes out, and I was like, oh, okay, you know, this guy looks like he could play the part, look like look like a dude you'd see in WWE, but what just got me was the crowd work. The whole crowd loved him, the women loved him, the dudes were cheering for him, just the entire crowd went nuts, and he just captivated the crowd like no other luchador did that night. So I hit him up on Instagram, told him, you know, what I thought, and it was a great time, and I was visiting from the U.S., and... Just that because of him, I was going to follow CMLL much, much more. And we started talking, and then I was able to obtain this mask. Um, now, aesthetically, Soberano Jr. has the best style in all of Lucha Libre. That's all of Lucha Libre. CMLL, Triple A, the indie stuff. I think he has the best style. Always reinventing himself. Always coming out with different masks for different occasions. Um, he came out with one for Valentine's Day. This one is the Supreme Box logo. Um, also has the same thing for his t-shirt. I think Soberano Jr. has the best style out of the out of the other luchadors. And then just in the ring stuff, in the ring, the guy's incredible. Um, has some iconic matches against Templario, Titan. Um, the guy just had a great year. I honestly could see him being really successful in the U.S. I hope he uh, gets a look or gets looked at in the near future. Um but yeah, just a really good dude. Every time I go to Mexico City, I make it a point to hit up his merch truck, try to buy something, get a picture with him. Um, just really want to support him. Seems very sincere. Seems like a good dude. And again, had it not been for this guy, none of this would be happening right now. All of this is all in thanks to Silverano Jr. Got me into the sport. Got me really appreciating what Lucha Libre means to my Mexican culture, what it means to my Mexican heritage, and just the history of it all. But guys, if you made it this long in the video, thank you so much. Counting down from 15 all the way to number one of my Lucha Libre mask collection. Please be sure to like, subscribe, share it, tag a friend. I'm doing giveaways this year, and I'm just going to have sporadic giveaways. I really want to get this channel growing. But again, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. And this was another episode of Red Card Lucha.